Welcome to Bods Mayhem Out. Your source for all hard rock, heavy metal, new metal, alternative, punk, horror punk, hardcore, rock, and all local bands with your host, John the Bod, a.k.a. The Bodfather. This is Jeffrey Schaefer from the band Valence, and you are listening to Bod's Mayhem Hour. The views and opinions of the guests do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of Bod's Mayhem Radio Network, its staff, affiliates, or sponsors. Parental discretion is advised. Welcome to Bod's Mayhem Radio Network. Hey everybody, welcome to Bod's Mayhem Hour. I'm your host, John the Bod, a.k.a. The Bod Father. As always, I'm bringing you guys awesome interviews. Today, it's an honor and a privilege to have Mr. Jeffrey Schaefer, guitarist of Valence. Valence is a New York-based progressive metal fusion quartet, and they will release their follow-up album to their independent music award-winning 2014 EP, Laser Baron. New upcoming album is called Cognitive Dissidence, out April 12th. And also their tour kicks off April the 13th. That's the uh, record store day. And also it's going to end on May 24th in Brooklyn, New York. That's going to be the album release show. So you want to get out and check that out as well, folks. Also, before we get into the interview here with uh, Jeffrey, I just want to give a little condolences out to former actor Joseph Pilato. He was on George Romero's Day of the Dead and Night Riders. Pilato passed away at the age of 78, and he played as Captain Rhodes in George Romero's Day of the Dead. So like I've always said this before, folks, get out to these conventions if you like the horror conventions to meet these actors and stuff from your favorite horror movie because today and tomorrow and next week is not guaranteed. So please get out and do that if you like that that stuff. Also, get out and check out your bands too. So, Jeffrey, my man, how's it going? I'm doing I'm doing really well. How are you, man? Doing awesome. Glad to have you on the show. Yeah, thank you so much. Really happy to be here. How's it been working with Adrenaline PR so far? Uh, it's it's been incredible. I mean, they are they are pros in every sense of the word. You know, with with this record, we really wanted to make sure that you know we got it to as many ears as possible. That yeah, that we got good good premieres, good placements for everything, and they've they've worked with us, you know, every step of the way. Even telling us when, you know, <laughs> we take you know a bad promo shoot, promo photo shoot, they'll let us know. Hey, you know, <laughs> maybe you guys should retake that. They're they've just been great with the with the advice, with connecting us with people like yourself. R- really incredible team they have over there at, at Adrenaline. Now you guys released your new music video for Preferred Nomenclature and previous music video, Damn It, Lena which was filmed by Derek Soto of Sin- Sinestra Studios. Is that, that's correct. Yeah, uh, yeah. How uh, did he produce or direct this new uh, music video, or did you go a different route? So now with, with the with the latest one, with uh, Preferred Nomenclature, we, we actually did it in the studio that we recorded the album in. And um, one of the producers, engineers, uh, Anthony, Anthony Lopardo, he's one of the, the co-owners of Westfall Studios. Awesome uh, like incredible engineer, incredible videographer, he sort of went back in there, did the did the playthrough in studio. By that point, it kind of felt like home, so it was really nice. And, and of course, D- Derek Derek's work on the first video was just was just amazing. We we kind of knew from the get go we wanted to work with him. He's he's an incredible photographer for for Live Nation. He's been doing uh, music videos the last few years as well, and uh, just really you know even better than we expected. Was it hard to choose between the current set of songs on this album? Which one would be the first single and video? Not you know, let alone the second one. Was it hard for you guys to choose it? And and also, what did you want that first song to say for you guys? For the ones who have not heard of Valence's music as of yet. Oh yeah, yeah. It was it was definitely hard picking a single. Not not least of which because you know like as a prog band we write a lot of really long songs. <laughs> right. Oh yeah. For and sure. I mean, Damn It Lana is, itself is it's longer than seven. It's a little over seven minutes. A bit, bit longer than your average single. But but that song we felt like I mean, for the same reason it's it's the first track on the album and for the same reason we made it the first track on the record, first single is we felt like just once the music comes in it just kind of hits you like a ton of bricks. 
just <laughs> you know once you're know, just shredding guitars right from the beginning kind of heavy and pretty quickly goes into uh, a nice lead that kind of changes the vibe of the song a bit so we thought it was kind of nice just kind of grabbing people from the beginning but also having something that you know maybe showcased some of the different feels and styles that uh, that we incorporate but i think we always knew it was going to be those two being the first single and uh just kind of figuring out which which was going to come first any songs standing out more to you than any right now possible on this new album i mean i know it must change every time you listen to it and it must be hard to choose between the current set of songs that you have because this must be like picking your favorite child or your collectible but <laughs> do, do you have any favorites man possibly yeah oh man that you are totally right it is it is kind of like picking a favorite child. Um, <laughs> well, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll say this: like we've got the, the closer on the record is this epic, you know, fourteen plus minute long song called "Red Sky at Morning." That that might be my favorite, if just because there's so much music in there. You know, it makes up like twenty percent of the record by itself. <laughs> it's almost cheating to to choose that as a favorite, but uh, yeah. it's it's also it's the la- it's the last thing on the album that we had written and kind of put together as a band. And the other reason that, that I would say that song is that we, to, to help fund the album, after we started recording and we were, you know, looking to, you know, press it, do music videos, make merchandise for it, we did a, a crowdfunding campaign uh, through Indiegogo, which, which was uh, successful, kind of slightly to, to our amazement. And we were able to invite some of the backers, some of the people that had supported the album during the crowdfunding campaign. We were able to bring them into the studio and do kind of like a gang vocal session or like a, we called it like a battle choir kind of chant at the end of it. And I, I think partially for that, that reason, being able to bring in some of our supporters and literally have them lend their voice to the album is probably the reason I would choose that as my favorite. That is pretty damn awesome. That is really cool, man. <laughs> no, thank you. What do you hope everyone takes away from the new album or message you hope they hear while listening to it or just any of Valence's music in general? What do you hope they get from it? Well, let's see. I mean, if, if nothing else, I hope that people come away, you know, hopefully remembering some of the melodies. I think with a lot of, uh, with a lot of like the more technical music, the more technical metal, sometimes it's, it can be just a lot of notes and we definitely play a lot of notes, <laughs> but I, there are a lot of melodies. We were really focused on trying to make melodies, riffs, leads that were you know, like singable, that were memorable or singable. And, and I do hope that, that some of those really stick with people to me that that'll tell us that we you know, accomplished at least one of the things we set out to do with this. And plus being a progressive band, instrumental stuff like that. I mean, you can really get away when you start listening to that music, you can really just escape for a while and get away for a while. Yeah. Yeah. I, and you know, that, that's, that's something people have told me. They'll, they'll say, you know, your, your music takes me on a journey or it's kind of, it has like a narrative or storytelling quality to it, which, which I love, you know, mm-hmm. I think the way that we, kind of develop our you know, these melodies, these themes, these riffs, and the way we kind of put them together. None of our songs follow like a normal song structure per se, but we still try to keep it cohesive. And so, I, 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 yeah, hopefully people can kind of, yeah, take a journey on it or, or kind of live out some kind of narrative or story with it. You know? And that's the way it should be, regardless if it's music with lyrics or if it's just music with the instrumental. It, uh, they should take you away for a while. Yeah. Who did the artwork for this album? Ah, the artwork was done by a man named Michael Bracco, and he goes he goes by the name Spaghetti Kiss. <laughs> uh, he does he does he does actually a lot of graphic novels, comic books. He has a comic book series called The Creators that's just awesome. He we we kind of knew he did the artwork on our last single that we put out like about a year and a half ago, summer of about seventeen. And we kind of knew right after that that we wanted to go back with him. We're kind of into, we've kind of made this like almost absurd sci-fi <laughs> artwork part of our, I guess, like visual style, visual brand. And he's, he's so good with it, so creative. And when we came to him with some of the different ideas for the album name and ways that we might want the album artwork to go, he just took it and ran with it. He, I mean, I think he really enjoyed it too and kind of enjoyed what we were going for. Uh, I, I couldn't be happier with the result. 
Oh yeah, it, it's a cool design or cool artwork on the cover of this album because I mean it's it's got the an army man with a laser gun. I mean it's it's cool looking man to to look at this artwork. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's it's on the the CD packaging. He actually did it like four panels, so it's it's like a gatefold. You know, opens up and uh, and the artwork kind of continues from the that that front cover onto the inside panels and then around to the back which was just, we didn't even ask him to do that. He just was like, no, this is, this is what, how it has to be done. And I know that, that, you know, CDs and physical products are not always, you know, the first things that people go to, but, uh, but it is, it's definitely nice to have that and be able to hold it, look at that artwork and experience Co- it that way. Cognitive descendants. I got it out that time, folks. <laughs> was recorded and produced at Westfall Studios in Long Island, New York. How was working back with those guys and gals on this again? That was in, incredible. So the Westfall Studios is co-owned two guys, Anthony Lopardo, who, who was the one who shot the, the, the video for, for, for Nomenclature, and the other guy is Ray Mart. He's the drummer for a band called Moontooth. I don't know if you're familiar with them. They, they actually have another album. <laughs> they have an album coming out this Friday, which is amazing. But we had, we had listened to Moontooth's last album, which was done there, and a, a few other bands that we knew from the New York city and long Island kind of area of New York. And we just, we loved the production. We loved the sound. It was, they were really on board with kind of our vision of the production in the sense that, you know, we wanted something that was going to, that was still going to be like really tight and modern sounding, but without being too robotic, Mm -hmm. still having some kind of organic life to it, the dynamics we wanted live drums and they were all about that and so going in there working with them i mean it was easier than it should have been (laughs) i feel working with them though did they bring something out of you guys the the past two times that that you were surprised that they actually pulled out of you all to put into this album yeah you know there was what was what was i guess kind of surprising especially was how much they were into kind of i just pulling all the stops <laughs> like we we weren't even like there were parts of the album that we were that are i guess have more of like a, a jammy kind of vibe to them and anthony and ray you know came out and they're like all right let's take a day and let's do some hand percussion stuff things that we, we hadn't even thought about doing and ended up adding just a lot to it uh we, we you know adding little things like you know hand percussion parts uh there were parts where where they they kind of were listening to it they're like you know this this would sound great with like a, a harmony going along with it and we went in there and you know ch- changed some parts between the guitars to make certain harmonies work that i think definitely made the made the songs better in the end kind of changed kind of the way that we look at some of the different parts and some of the different songs on the record too uh yeah they they were they were great they definitely didn't hold back their opinion which was very welcome and all of their suggestions just about all of that worked well, that's really good. good. <laughs> we took that's good though, man, because you want to make sure that you're when you're when you're paying that money, and that's expensive, very expensive, folks. You want to make sure that they're yeah. on board with you. You don't want to. You don't want them to just say, "Okay, good, let's go on to the next one." Because to me, that's that's just feeding bullshit. You know better than that. Absolutely. Yeah, and I I think that's that's one of the reasons that we you know decided to work with Westfall. We we knew you know, we could tell that they really cared about the products they produced. It wasn't just about getting people in and out, you know, and making a quick buck. Yeah, they, sure. they really put a lot of work and a lot of love into it. I would go back there in a heartbeat. Cause that's their brand. I mean, that when it puts out there, that's them on the line and, and you guys too. <laughs> I mean, <Yeah. laughs> how much growth musically have you seen this band and yourself go through up to the release of this new album? Or has it just been more just of a personal growth or each of you guys involved in this, Jeffrey? Oh man, it's, um, that's, oh, that's a good question. <laughs> I this this album I think for us was it was definitely important to us and that I felt I, I think we all felt like we needed to make a really kind of epic musical statement. This is the first other other than uh, this single that we released like a year and a half ago. This is this is the most that you this is the the only other recording we really have with our current bassist Will Helmus, who has been a, a really just key part of the evolution of our sound since he joined the band give or take three years ago Mm. and so being able to do an album for one do it right go into a studio that was right for us to 
you really have somebody that I think was able to kind of see our vision as to what we wanted with the record and have it connect with him and have him bring his own experience and his own influences and ideas to the table and, and push us in a lot of ways too. He's, I mean, he's a monster bass player. It's, <laughs> I think the first time we ever jammed with him, the minute he left, we were like, oh my God, this, we, need to, <laughs> we need to get that, this guy to stay. <laughs> um, and, and so I think just as, as a group, you know, the writing of this record, really a lot of it happened during you know, that, that early stage of him joining the band and, and gigging with us for the those first couple, of, first couple of years that he was in the band. And so, yeah, I think the, what, in, in some ways it kind of represents that turning point and that kind of evolution and blooming, blossoming of our style that's come with that. But um, I think also just the process of, of going into the studio and recording. We, we, we started going to the studio about a year ago. And during the summers when we ran our, ran our crowdfunding campaign, I, I think going through that whole process of, of creating the campaign, of, of budgeting it, of, of promoting it was definitely big for us as well. And we kind of also in the process, right after we finished recording it, we kind of hit the road for a short, short jaunt that kind of took us a little further than we'd ever been before. All of these, I think, kind of are coalescing now <laughs> as we release the album and we've got we've kind of really refined our, our live performance, you know, both from being in the studio, playing these things, you know, trying to get them perfect for the record, as well as the experience we've had there. And, and yeah, also the dynamics of the band being the first record with all four of us. The evolution of violence. <laughs> <laughs> do you like to do anything differently during the writing and recording process to help keep your mind fresh and open to not let the music get stale or boring. Do you like to do anything different to help you out during that time? During the, during the writing process, I guess the big thing, and this is true. I think for all of us as a group is anytime we go in to write something new, we always try to look at it from a different approach. So like, you know, if, if one record, like our last EP was primarily written by one or two members of the band, you know, we kind of came at it. And that's in many ways how Laser Baron was. Not that we wrote all the drum parts, but it, it was a lot of me and Mike kind of writing that. I think after that saying, okay, we're going to, we're going to approach the way we write this less of this. Okay. People are going to bring songs to the table and more. We're all going to bring different ideas to the table, see what works together, what doesn't see if we can try different approaches we can tell ourselves, okay, we're going to try to write something that we'll give ourselves constraints sometimes. Say, okay, we're going to write, we're going to write something, and we're going to try to make it, uh, you know, very almost try try to go in there with with some kind of direction, some kind of objective, which which I think is a little bit different than we've approached it in the past. Whether that's we're trying to capture a certain vibe or we're trying to incorporate certain elements of our sounds into into a particular song or even if we're just trying to say you know what this song is going to be very bass centric and we're going to try to kind of work our our riffs and our writing kind of around this idea that's i think that change in approach and and every time we go to write especially write a new group of songs a new record we try to take a different approach in that sense if that makes any sense why can fans expect that a show from Valence who have not got to see you guys live as of yet? What are they going to get when they come to see you all live? Ooh, let's see. So <laughs> I think live, we, we really try to bring a lot of energy on stage. And I mean, it, it, as every band should. But you know, I think there's a tendency sometimes with the more technical kind of shreddy bands to be kind of like standing there staring at your fretboard. And, and don't get me wrong, they're incredible players who – it's so like, yeah, you, you kind of have to do that. But, <laughs> but we're, we really try not to be one of those bands. We really do try to bring a lot of energy to our performance. Really kind of, yeah, I, I, with, with any live performance, you know, especially when you're, you know, when you're kind of at our level, it's, it's, all, it's, you know, it's all about the energy that's going between the performers on stage and the audience out there. And we really like to put that energy out there and try to, you know, it, it becomes a... Uh, Oh, what's the word I'm looking for? A uh, like a self-fulfilling cycle, you know. We we put the energy out there, gets brought back to us, and it just we we leave a lot of a lot of sweat and blood on the stage, you know. 
we're living in the digital era of recording albums to get music out quicker. And plus now we have social media to reach out to more fans who have not got to hear of Valence as of yet. Do you like this that we are living in now versus say 10 years ago? Mm-hmm. Oh man, it's definitely a mixed bag. I mean, I, I, you're right. On one hand, social media makes, makes it easier for like more niche artists that don't do the more mainstream stuff to be discovered and to be shared. I mean, the amount of incredible acts that are out there now is just, it's, it's overwhelming even trying to keep up with it sometimes, but at the same time, I mean, but that's, in my opinion, that's a good thing, you know, being able to have such a wealth of art out there that you can find just with a, a quick search or a quick su- suggestion. I mean, of course, the downside to that is that it, is, it does make it harder sometimes to cut through the noise. You know, as a musician, because there's so much other stuff out there, you know, getting, getting people to, to pay attention to you when they're already overwhelmed with the amount of music that's being produced can, is certainly a challenge. And, and of course, all of the, the difficulties with, you know, being a professional musician and paying the bills today, I mean, some of that is certainly because of the way we consume music digitally now, as well as just the way, I, I guess, live performances have been treated and have been paid. But so, so it, is a, it is a bit of a, a two-sided coin there. You know, you've got, you've, it's incredible. I mean, I've been influenced by artists from corners of the globe that I may not have been, you know, 10, 15 years ago. But yeah, definitely, definitely makes it harder sometimes to, to really stand out. So. What does Valence bring to the table for music that's not out there as of right now, if anything? I think for us, our big, one of our big focuses is, you know, and I, and I was saying this before, you know, we are a very shreddy kind of technical band, but with a lot of very technical bands, bands that shred a lot, that have, you know, a different time signature every five seconds, sometimes the music can be very, it can sound very choppy sometimes, like things are kind of just thrown together. I think where we kind of carve out our niche is how we're able to take like weird time. You know, we'll be playing in like 13, eight time signature and Chris, our drummer and will helm as our bassist will somehow make that group. <laughs> like that's, I don't think that's an easy thing to do. And I, I give all the credit to, to our rhythm section for making that happen. But I think that's what helps keep our music feeling cohesive. Even when there are lots of different riffs, different parts, the fact that it's always grooving, even as it's changing and you know constantly, is a pretty, I think, defining aspect of our sound. I'd say the other big thing is, you know, again, with a lot of a lot of music, it's a lot of this instrumental music, progressive instrumental stuff, especially. A lot of it is you know, kind of like the guitar shredder is like. Satriani or Vi, you know, or you know, these days you'll have like a uh, band like Intervals or, you know, the, these solo guitar players who are, who are incredible players, but it's very much about that one player and the rest of the band is kind of providing the backing track for them. Mm-hmm. With us, it's, it's definitely not ever about any one musician. It, I think there's a good balance between what instruments are, are prominent or have solos or are the focal point of different parts of a song. There's a lot more balance there. I think we kind of treat it like, I mean, I, I, this probably sounds a little pretentious, but yeah, we treat it more like, you know, like an orchestra, you know, the different parts of an orchestra. It's not always all about the strings. Sometimes right. the woodwind's got to come into. And I think, I think those two aspects of our sound, the kind of the way we kind of orchestrate between the three of us, the four of us, and the way we kind of keep a groove throughout these weird parts, I'd say that those are probably our big defining unique aspects what made you want to become a musician what was that spark for you that said yeah that's what i want to do right there oh man i you know i, I think i just took to it i was for me i was i want to say eight or nine years old my first instrument was a clarinet <laughs> and i uh maybe someday it'll make its way on a valence record probably not but <laughs> uh I, I think i was nine years old i started playing and i i just took to it immediately I didn't want to stop practicing it, and, and I got I got and I got pretty good at clarinet. But when I was about 13 years old, is when I got my first guitar, and once I once I picked up the guitar, it was like it was like way way even more obsessed than I was with the clarinet, just you know practicing for hours. Yeah, so, so for me it was one of those things that just I started doing it, and it became 
a bit of an obsession, and I just haven't stopped doing it since. <laughs> how much? I, I know you guys are a, a instrumental band, but how much local support does Valence get via venues and plus some airplay, maybe if any? I guess it, it depends. We're, we're we all live kind of around New York City, not directly in it, mm-hmm. but New York City is still kind of our our main stomping ground, our main kind of home base. And when we play in the city, it's it's great. I mean, we've been playing long enough now that that we've got we've got a pretty reliable base of people that'll show up to to most of our shows. We've got you know a lot of connections that allow us to open for for bigger acts when they're touring through, which is which is awesome. When we when we start to venture, I, I live just north of the city and uh, and kind of the area that I live, there's very few music venues, at least ones that do hard rock or metal but we have there is there's a there's this one club that it, it, in many ways has been one of one of our kind of home bases called garcia's named after jerry garcia big like jam band club but because it's like right in my hometown of uh, port chester new york we've we've tended to do pretty well there too which is kind of kind of fun going into the the jammy hippie club and you know just shredding and turning the volume up louder than probably any other acts that they <laughs> they book there on a regular basis. So, so I guess for those, for uh, as far as airplay, the, the big one by us, uh, actually in, in New Jersey, uh, which is where our basis will helm us is from, uh, WSOU out of uh, Seton Hall University. They do a lot of really cool, really cool under, underground music, underground metal, and they've, they've played our music a bunch, which is always awesome. In, in addition to different bloggers, Bonesaw Zion, and and others who are based out of New York. Look, the amplifier goes up to 11. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love Spottle Tap. <laughs> love that movie. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Is there a country that stands out or even shocks you that violence gets support from or your music even gets played, possibly? Yeah. I, I, I don't know if it should be a surprise, but we noticed shortly after we released our our, our, our first record that we self-recorded almost seven years ago, Sleepwalker, we had people in Brazil, a couple of people in Brazil, like re-uploading it to YouTube and, and sharing it places. And I don't know, I don't know where, where people, <laughs> where they found it from. You know, at the time we weren't, we weren't getting, you know, write-ups on, on big metal blogs or anything. We were just kind of putting our music out there and hoping for the best. That that was really cool and kind of eye opening. Like, oh, there are people out there who are finding our stuff somehow. But we've we've had to we've sent CDs to Croatia, to Lithuania, a bunch of places in Eastern Europe where it was a similar thing. It's like, you know, I, I don't know where, where they found our music, but yeah, you know, kind of like we were saying with the social media thing. You know, it does having having this connected world online. You know, you'll find things from other countries and other places that you'd never expect or never would have otherwise. And I'm just really glad that people have been able to find us that way. Jeff, how can folks stay in touch with you guys, buy some merchandise, tour dates, things like that, my man, how can you do that? Uh, so a few different ways we got our website is www.valence.band. That'll give you a link to everything. You can sign up for our email list. We've got a band camp, which is valence.bandcamp.com. That's our main store. If you're looking to pick up a CD, download or pre-order the new album, Cognitive Dissidence, and you can find us on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. We're pretty active on all of those. Yeah, search for Valence Band, and hopefully you'll find us. <laughs> Folks, get out and check out their their videos, preferred nomenclature, plus they have Domine Lena. You want to get out and check those videos out, plus get out and check out their new album that's coming out April 12th, Cognitive Dis- Dissidence. Or descendants, yeah. or dissidents. There I go. And also yeah. uh, their previous, well, their EP, Laser Baron. You want to get out and pick all this stuff up. It's some good, good stuff. Jeffrey, before I let you go, good sir, would you care to do a promo for my show? Absolutely. This is Jeffrey Schaefer from the band Valence, and you are listening to Bod's Mayhem Hour. Everybody, stick around. We got some great, great stuff coming up. You only hear these interviews right here on Bod's Mayhem Hour and Bod's Mayhem Radio Network. Please get out and check out our Facebook page. It has our podcast link plus our YouTube link and soon a Twitch link. Also, get out and check out Valence. Pick up Cognitive Dissidence out April 12th 
and also pick up their EP Laser Baron from 2014. Folks, I'm telling you right now, give this band a shot. You may dig them. Jeffrey, thank you so much, and the best of luck to you guys. Ah, thank you so much. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.